While adjustive competition is primarily an educational tool designed to teach competitors about international law, it is also designed to impart upon students the importance of professionalism in the legal field, and in particular, how to conduct themselves appropriately when acting as an advocate before a tribunal. Therefore, Jessup competitors are judged on style, poise, and demeanor, in addition to their knowledge of the law and the facts of the case and ability to answer judges' questions. You should consider the following four points when evaluating an oralist's style, poise, and demeanor. The oralist should convey formality, respect, and professionalism. The competitors are arguing before the International Court of Justice, also known as the World Court, which is presided over by some of the most distinguished legal minds in recent history. The ICJ is housed in the Peace Palace in The Hague, an important institution often referred to as the seat of international law. Therefore, the student's presentation style should reflect that environment, and they should speak to you as they would address an ICJ judge during an oral pleading session in the Peace Palace. The oralists should have good posture, expressions, and gestures. This point addresses confidence and rapport with the bench. When the oralist is speaking at the podium, and even when she is sitting at the council table, she should carry herself in a way that shows confidence in her knowledge and in the position advocated. And she should use facial expressions and hand gestures that enhance this impression. You should find the expressions persuasive and likable, and if an oralist feels disappointment or frustration at any time, it should not be portrayed on her face or in her voice. The oralist should also refrain from making distracting or unsportsmanlike gestures or expressions during their opponent's time at the podium. The oralist should maintain consistent eye contact with all judges. There may be one judge that takes the lead in asking questions during the entire round, but that judge is still only one-third of the score. All judges are equal, no matter how active or how quiet they are during the round. The oralist should maintain eye contact with all judges and speak directly to all judges so that each judge on the bench feels engaged in the conversation, even if only one of them is asking the questions. Of course, we encourage all judges to participate in questioning the oralist during each match. The oralist should come across as engaged and conversational. The oralist should close the gap between her position and the bench's concerns. She should build a rapport with you that makes you feel as if you understand her position and its greatest strengths. This works best when the oralist engages you in a natural yet respectful conversational exchange. The following is a good example of an oralist demonstrating all the points we have mentioned regarding style, poise, and demeanor. We are asking the court to adjudicate on the detention of George Smith and it is our submission that that is contrary to customary international law. It is therefore clear that there is no dispute regarding George Smith that it arises under a multilateral treaty reservations because Caracas' submission is reliant only on customary international law. If there are no further questions regarding the multilateral treaty reservation, I would turn then to the third objection to jurisdiction, and that is that Nemen may be considered an indispensable third party. It is submitted that the doctrine that an indispensable third party, if absent, may preclude the court from adjudicating the dispute is one reserved for exceptional cases when this court is asked to adjudicate on the conduct of a third state without that state's consent as were the words of Judge Azevedo in the Corfu Channel case and applied in the exceptional cases of Monetary Gold and of East Timor, when in those cases Albania and Indonesia's conduct respectively were to be adjudicated by the court, the court felt that it could not adjudicate those, that conduct and those interests. Nemen's interest in this proceeding is more of a corollary to the interest of Bangladesh in the trial of Pakistani prisoners of war case, where India submitted that Bangladesh was an indispensable third party because rights of Bangladeshi nationals had been infringed. The court held that this was no objection to jurisdiction.